The United Kingdom is awaiting the results of the Tory leadership race, which will be announced at 11.30 GMT on Monday. Although former Chancellor Sunak was leading the opinion polls initially, Truss is now tipped to become the next UK Prime Minister. With online and postal polls now closed, Foreign Secretary Truss is widely expected to succeed Boris Johnson. However, according to recent opinion polls, Lee's Truss's popularity has seen a sharp decline. Support for the Foreign Secretary seems to be waning among the British electorate, even before her expected appointment on Monday. A poll by a global public opinion and data company called YouGov shows that only 12% of Britons expect Truss to be a good or great leader. 52% uh, expect her to be poor or terrible. Britain seems to be split on whether Truss will be better than Boris Johnson, but seeing the polls, the majority of people tend to think she would be worse than every other Premier, going back to Margaret Thatcher. As per the data provided by the research agency Opinion, the percentage of Britons who expect to see Truss as the next UK Prime Minister has also declined from 49% to 31% over the last month. The polls reinforce how damaging the leadership debates have been for Truss. Well, she's been talking about a lot about tax cuts, uh, less about targeted relief for people on low incomes because of high energy prices. In terms of her overall positioning, you know, she's been a member of the current government, but what do we know about what she'd be like as Prime Minister with a series of policy problems facing her? We actually we know surprisingly little. Much of Truss's agenda in the hustings has been about slashing taxes and prioritising economic growth as the United Kingdom faces decades high inflation and is tipped to enter recession later this year. She had earlier criticised the notion of direct government handouts, but recently Truss promised to deliver immediate support to Britons facing unaffordable fuel bills. I will act immediately on bills and on energy supply because I think those two things go hand in hand. We need to deal with the immediate problem. Mm -hmm. We need to help people. We need to help businesses. But we also need to sort out the supply issues and that have ended up and made us end up being where we are. It's the job of the Bank of England to bring inflation down. And I'm a great believer in the independence of the Bank of England. Sunak, on the other hand, has assailed Truss's plans as reckless. He warned that they risk heightening inflation even further. The former Chancellor has argued that his experience of guiding the UK's finances through the pandemic make him better suited to lead the country through its current economic woes. I have the ability I have the experience to safely steer us through the storms ahead. And, and, my plan, and my plan is the right plan to tackle inflation, to compassionately support those who most need our help and to safeguard our children's economic inheritance. Because as Margaret Thatcher and Nigel Lawson knew, maxing out the country's credit card is not right, it's not responsible, and it is certainly not conservative. Truss or Sunak, whoever wins the keys to Downing Street, will have one of the shortest political honeymoon period. Several British unions have said they will be holding protests on the day of the Tory election results. With energy bills spiraling, double digits inflation, rising mortgage rates and fears of a long recession, the next Premier of the United Kingdom will be facing a daunting entry. Said and joining us now is Kadira Pethiagoda from London. Mr. Kadira is an international affairs expert. Welcome to We On Kadira. Thanks for having me. What is at stake at the final stage of the Conservative Party leadership contest? And maybe for the benefit of our viewers, how does the voting work? Yeah, so in terms of what's at stake, I think from a historical perspective, um, you know, uh, Britain has the chance to have the first uh, Indian background, first Asian, first non-white prime minister, which is something as significant as uh, the election of Obama. Um, but that's unlikely to happen, as you've seen uh, with the polls. 
Um, in terms of policy, though, um, I think the country is facing uh, the greatest challenges since World War II. So there's quite a lot at stake. Um, highest inflation in 40 years, energy prices going up to nearly £4,000, wages are lower, the NHS is underfunded, um, mortgages are going to go up. Uh, and perhaps most of all, uh, we've seen the world come closer to a nuclear cataclysm uh, than it's been since the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, so I think there's quite a lot at stake. Um, and the Conservative members uh, are the ones who are sort of uh, making this decision. And in terms of the process of how that works, um, so they could have voted by online or by post. Um, there's about 160,000 of them uh, that um, were eligible to vote, uh, possibly a bit more than that. Um, and uh, the, I think the thing with that is they, they actually don't necessarily represent uh, the public. Um, so uh, it's, been, it's, it's quite an interesting dynamic where you've got Liz Trust, who's quite unpopular with the public, who's, uh, but who's heavily tipped to win uh, this vote. Kadira, your predictions, how will a trust premiership or Sunak premiership look like? Well, I think uh, there's very, uh, you know, uh, very little difference between the two when it comes to some of the very key uh, and fundamental issues uh, when, on foreign policy. You know, they're both falling over each other to compete uh, on who has the more uh, pro-Ukraine, uh, pro-NATO uh, position um, on economic issues. Uh, they're both trying to appeal to traditional conservative values. I'd say the difference is that uh, Rishi has a more uh, long-term, uh, probably more fiscally uh, responsible uh, approach uh, to taxation. Um, and Liz Truss seems to be trying uh, to go for a more populist approach. Uh, but I think, you know, tax cuts um, are not going to solve uh, the, the huge problems that the, the country is facing. Um, so any, uh, either prime minister, either of them, if they become prime minister, I think they'd really have to look at, are they going to continue uh, with the business as usual? Or are they going to sort of break free uh, of some of these particular uh, elite uh, interests and agendas and actually uh, put the public's will and the public's interest first. There have been speculations about an early general elections. Is there a likelihood that the new prime minister may choose to call for one? I think there will be a lot of pressure uh, from a democratic perspective on them to do so, uh, particularly given, as you mentioned, uh, Liz Truss uh, isn't very popular with the public. Uh, but of course, on the other hand, that will uh, motivate her to try and in some way not call uh, an early election, uh, particularly given that Boris Johnson won the party a, a huge majority in parliament, which uh, gives it so much power to pass legislation and, uh, and have an impact. Um, that, you know, she will be getting advice from both sides, I guess, in terms of uh, what to do next. Finally, Kadira, what do you anticipate Boris Johnson will do next? Well, I think, uh, you know, Boris Johnson, uh, when he was prime minister, you know, he, uh, he, he would have made a, a, a range of contacts. He served certain interests. Um, in certain segments of society. So there may be, uh, you know, corporate board positions awaiting him. Um, he was also quite central in, in sort of championing uh, NATO. So there may be some security industry uh, opportunities for him there. Um, but he's also quite a charismatic uh, leader. So, uh, you know, trade envoy type roles uh, would also possibly be open for him. All right, let's see how it plays out tomorrow. We'll have to end it there. Kadira Pethia Goda is an international affairs expert. Thank you very much for making time and for talking to Weon today. Thanks, Weon. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.